Hello everybody, I'm Henry Lee. Welcome back to blueheronarts.com studio. We're going to show you how to make a hanging scroll um, in Chinese uh, traditional uh, mounting technique plus uh, modern um, dry mounting technique. So in the first uh, part of this uh, series, uh, you have seen how to wet mount a painting. We call that prim primary backing. Today, I'm going to show you a complete uh, process of how to make a hanging screw. Um, uh, this painting has been mounted uh, first with uh, uh, rice paper. Uh, there are two reasons uh, doing this. One is uh, um, to make this painting flat. You might ask if uh, you can skip this directly with the dry mounting. Uh, the answer is yes. However, in some cases like this, the painting may be too thin. Uh, you need to back it as preparation uh, with, the dry, with the wet mounting. Uh, because the thin paper tends to uh, create more wrinkles with dry mounting. But with wet mounting, it's safer. Another reason you might think is that uh, uh, with traditional wet mounting, you can uh, peel it off to separate the painting and remount it in the future. So it's um, less permanent than dry mounting, so to speak. Um, that's why I did, did this wet mounting first as a preparation for uh, dry mounting. So I'm going to take this off. I just cut the backing the backing paper around the painting. We use the uh, heavy paste to fix it during the, the drying process because we will shrink stretch, right? So I cut two sides and the, the bottom first. you can see it, it's not the top. Just take that off. So this is a perfectly flat and ready to be um, mounted to on silk screw, okay? The first step of uh, um, mounting a screw is to mount the original painting with silicone paper. You want the silicone paper a little smaller or equal to the uh, painting. But before you trim it, at this point, there's no um, need to trim this painting because we're going to do it in the next, next step. don't want it to uh, have a too big uh, silicone paper because the adhesive may s uh, stick on the table or the pad. Since the painting has been wet mounted, so uh, it's very easy. You don't have to iron for too long. Just activate the uh, silicone paper. I'll put a protecting sheet if uh, I need to iron on the front. Let's this piece of uh, paper is uh, uh, the release paper that, that has been used uh, with the other project. So there's no film on, on it. I'm going to turn my iron on. This uh, step 
uh, is not to make it flat because it's already flat. Uh, the purpose of this step is to add adhesive to the back of the original painting. Um, in instead of using paste, the dry mounting process uh, replaces the paste with uh, uh, silicone. So we just need to iron gently. And you will see this process uh, uh, in the later steps. It's very important to realize that because if you mount the painting, you will have to spray water and it will take a long time, right? And this only takes about uh, 15 seconds to activate each spot. So it may still take more than one, one minute to do the entire painting, but just, to, you know, go easy. Make sure it's uh, even. Because it's winter time, so I turn the temperature a little higher than summer time. Just make sure it's, it's good together. I mean, the uh, adhesive attached to the painting firmly. This uh, step is much easier if you pre uh, mount or back the original with uh, wet mounting so you don't have to worry about uh, if it's flat or not. Um, you can see some area is still not firm, so we need to iron more. I just turn on the temperature so it will go faster. You can go directly on this side too, but sometimes uh, I'm a little worried about what happens on the front, so you can do both sides. So no water at this point. I mean, the entire process, uh, dry mounting, need no water except the original painting. Backing, if you use dry mounting, then that's uh, what we have uh, mastered supposedly before, right? This is for the scroll mounting demo. So I'm not going to into detail about dry mounting the original. So the next step will be uh, squareize it. I'll do it uh, with the release paper on. So I don't get uh, uh, any trouble with this adhesive. Step two. Step one is uh, mount the original or the uh, pre-mounted ori original with the uh, uh, adhesive. You may call this uh, uh, apply silicone paper to the back of the painting because it has been mounted before, right? So the purpose is to add the adhesive to the back of the painting. And then the step, the next step is to squarelize it or trim off the extra edge to squarelize it. And you should start with uh, one long side first and use that as reference. Usually, the inscription is more important. So I'll start from this side. I try to figure out the total width because uh, that's important with my other part measurement. But uh, you should leave all the other material measurement until this is done. So 
but this is the base for other measurement until you know the precise measurement of the original don't cut any uh, margin or strips from the silk Once uh, this is cut, you cannot pull it back, so be very careful, make sure it's uh, aligned. Okay, and this is the left side. Now we go to the other side. Try to get this painting the 17 inch wide, 17 and a half, maybe 17, 17, maybe here, maybe I can do that. Make sure it's parallel. Okay, I'm going to do the cut now. Now you have to consider the square. Make sure it's a square. Since I have made this uh, hanging strips, so I need to be very careful. Uh, I would suggest you do the cutting of this uh, hardware later uh, until you know the total width. Because uh, at this point, uh, if you make any adjustment, this uh, pre made uh, wood strips will not fit on the, the uh, the round doors will not fit, so I need to be a little careful. Okay, I will take a break and go to the step three. Okay, the next step is to uh, and I attach supporting strips to the painting. This is the um, supporting strip. It's an iron product also. Uh, one side is a uh, colored paper and the other uh, backed with a silicon adhesive. So we need to um, tear off the back of the original painting the, to peel off the release paper. And leave the adhes adhesive to the back of the painting. And you should do this from the corners.
and you do another corner. You can start from all four corners and uh, to peel towards the center. This also prevents the painting from uh, curling. Now I have a, a, a new uh, piece of uh, dusting, dust protection paper ready uh, to be used. Here's what I, I do. You can put the painting facing down or up. It depends on your preference. So I will put the painting uh, facing up. And also the strip is facing up. This is what I do. I'll fix one end and maybe another end. So the, okay, just uh, temporarily. You see why I use a piece of uh, uh, metal, um, or you can use a piece of glass, tempered glass, was it withstand the heat, right? It, it's temporarily uh, stick on it, it will not permanent. And uh, because the backside of the painting is adhesive, right? So I align it, it because the size of the board is a little smaller. So I have to do it two, uh, multiple times. And you can you can start from the middle. So cut off the extra as long as it's straight. So this will add accent to the to the edge. Traditionally, you can cover one millimeter. So you can do a little more because we have a little wider strip. It depends on the size of the painting. It can go from 1.1 uh, 1 millimeter to 1.5 millimeter. And then you can just iron on with iron. Activate the film on the back of the It's very important that you remember you do the, the sides first, and then the top and the bottom. Everything should be like that, all the strips. Okay, now I use a handy iron. So this will be easier to handle because I only want to iron this much. Let it cool down a little bit. It will stick together. And you can take out this extra part with a knife. Okay, now I'll move a little bit. Continue this uh, side. You can position it first and then confirm all the parts. So 
it will not stick on the back. If you use the fabric, it might stick on the back. That's why I use a piece of glass or metal. Not plexiglass because it's not withstand to the heat. So we want to use a tempered glass. First of all, I fix the strip temporarily on the board. Right. You can start from the middle. And just tap a little bit first to position it. Now we go through it. Should come off because it's a, you know, supposed to stick on the glass. <coughs> this uh, hard surface also gives you more precise control. If it's a soft, you cannot really do this. Let's continue with the bottom and the top. Straight. The larger painting may be more difficult to handle. We need a larger table and larger board. Just remember, uh, both sides facing up, the sticky side facing the board. Often you will find your ways of uh, doing the the work. It's a craft. You know, the more experience you have, the better you will do. This is my silk, my first silk scroll project. So I want to show you all the uh, mistakes and the uh, rescues. Oops, see my mistake, <laughs> the wrong side up.
we need to make sure it's the sticky side facing the table. You may have to use a different piece. Okay, this should be on the back of the painting. That's why uh, we put the painting on top, right? That's uh, step three, adding supporting strips. <clears throat> After this, you will know the, the other measurement because uh, uh, this is the base for other measurements, like a, uh, the total length minus this, uh, this piece will be the, the margin you need for uh, the silk. Or the total width, total width is a uh, um, deduct the the painting size it will be the strips for the margin uh, the size so you can cut those materials next okay now the next step will be preparing materials for silk margin and the uh, uh, the backing paper for the entire piece. Uh, 